work begins in earnest for the contingent of Cameroonian military experts deployed by President Paul Beer to assist in operations. Gratitude is expressed to the state of Cameroon for the unfailing support. The COVID-19 scare prompts laboratories to burn the candlelight. High testing demands are exceeding laboratory processing capacities, leaving the population in utter distress. The civil photo news tonight props into the worrying issue. Cotton Sport of Garoua urges Renaissance Sportive of Bekan, Morocco, two goals to zero in the second Group B game of the African Confederations Cup. The team now seconds the group with three points. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Those were the headlines of the 730 News. I urge you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus. The delegation from Cameroon to Equatorial Guinea on a consolation mission has been to the military site in Bata where four explosions occurred, killing more than 100 persons. Over 600 people were injured and significant infrastructural damage was recorded throughout the city and the military experts from Cameroon have begun work. Albert Njembonda is on special assignment. He now reports that a distressed population is warned on an impending danger of mishandling the remnants of the explosion spread in some neighborhoods. Veritable scenes of an apocalypse welcome you at the Guantama military base in Bata. Houses shattered, armored cars totally burnt, weapons as sensitive as mortars and rocket propelled grenades calcinated. <laughs> On site are French military experts with experiences from Iraq, Afghanistan and Lebanon. Attention, be careful where you put your foot, they tell ministers Joseph Betiasomo and Paul Atanganji. The site remains dangerous as more explosives buried in the rubble could potentially be fatal. They also say particles of these weapons could be found as far as 15 kilometers from here, dots the need to secure the site and also sensitize the local population to be more vigilant. The French experts also gratify President Paul Bia for deploying Cameroonian military experts for, according to them, their contributions will be instrumental. Cameroon's humanitarian aid to Equatorial Guinea has been hailed as a perfect show of compassion to a brotherly nation. The shipment of medical, edible and non-edible items were handed over to Equatorial Guinean state authorities in Bata by the minister delegate at the presidency in charge of defense, Joseph Betia Somo, and the minister of territorial administration, Paul Atanganji. They described the relief package as the most significant the country has received since the tragedy on March 7. Constantine Baum is on special assignment to Bata now reports. A good neighbor will always come to assist a friend in times of need. It is just what Cameroon has done to Equatorial Guinea following the March 7, 2021 Bata explosion that left over 100 dead and more than 600 people wounded. The head of state, President Paul Beer, dispatched a huge consignment of humanitarian and relief material to assist Equatorial Guinea meet the needs of the affected population. 
the interministerial delegation led by the minister delegate at the presidency in charge of defense, Joseph Betia Somo, and the minister of territorial administration, Paul Atanganji, came with three components of the Cameroon military. The medical corps with a good stock of equipment and drugs, the army fire and rescue unit, the military engineering corps, which has the expertise in investigating issues related to explosives, the humanitarian aid and relief material contains important stock of non-food items and non-perishable food items from the ministries of trade, livestock, fisheries and animal industries with mattresses and blankets from the Ministry of Territorial Administration. The assistance reflects the demand of the host. The medical team, military engineering corps and army fire rescue unit will stay in Bata for as long as the host needs, needs their services. With the gesture, Cameroon joins a number of countries who have come to the aid of Equatorial Guinea. The Minister of State for Interior and Defence Minister of Equatorial Guinea received the relief material on behalf of the President of Equatorial Guinea, Bedi. Sorry for breaching that report. The appreciation of Cameroon's material and technical assistance to the people of Equatorial Guinea has been expressed by the entire nation, beginning with the head of state, His Excellency Theodoro Obiangema Bazogo. The Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atanganji, says the Equator Guinean government admits the gesture is just one out of many Cameroon has made in the past. Take a listen. We came purposely with the Minister of Defense to bring contribution from His Excellency President Paul Bia to President Obiang Gemambazogo. In return, President Obiang Gemambazogo has thanked President Paul Bia for this great gesture of solidarity. And he said in times of difficulties, this is when you know that you are true friends. And that he has instructed us to tell President Paul Bia that he really, really expresses his high consideration and appreciation for this gesture. And President Obiangema has instructed his own his ministers to work closely with the delegation from Cameroon. What is important is that President Obiangema has sent us back to tell President Paul Bia, thank you for this wonderful gesture. And we now talk about the Simak subregion. The Simak states commemorates the 12th edition of the Simak Day, which centers around regional integration and industrial development in moments of crisis. We focus tonight on adaptation and mitigation principles. The coronavirus pandemic has undoubtedly crippled and slowed down development projects in the subregion and now calls abound on the need for resilience. Caroline Okie Anoma reports on how this can be attained. From the beginning of the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, the CEMAG region as a whole, and specifically member countries, have witnessed economic jolt. It laid down about 4%. Uh, While the economic growth has witnessed a decline, health costs have skyrocketed because of the unawaited pandemic. CEMAG uh, uh, took uh, some specific measures. We were to allow, to, to make uh, an allocation of uh, 433 million francs CFA to equip the laboratories of OSEAC and also to make available, you know, test devices. We're told that on January 22, 2021, CEMAC multiplied efforts in concordance with the Ministry of Public Health to make available vaccine, even though the type of vaccine was not disclosed. Notwithstanding, to sustain member states' economy, the SEMA governing body took some necessary measures. Two billion was allocated to each country of SEMA in order to help them to face that uh, issue. Although the health crisis is impacting the regional integrative projects, other projects have materialized such as free roaming, the soon-to-be continental free trade zone, and many others who were told are slowly but surely attaining maturity. In this running news, there has been rising complaints on delays witnessed in the issuance of COVID-19 test results, especially for travellers who need the documents as a major requirement to fly. There are allegations that high testing demands surpass the capacities of laboratory processing. Beatrice Law Samba, when finding out from some laboratories in Yaoundé, accredited for COVID-19 tests to find out where the difficulty lies. Here's a report. 
on COVID-19 testing grounds to verify claims that test results are not coming back fast enough. I have done different tests and due to delays in test results, my flight due for March 12 has been postponed. The bulk of the complaints about delays in COVID-19 test results come from travelers like him who point fingers at the National Public Health Laboratory, one of six labs recognized for COVID-19 tests in the center region. The laboratory attends to hundreds of samples from travelers in search of this airport requirement, apart from its routine testing. Some samples provide doubtful results, and we need to redo lab processing. This brings about delays sometimes. Perhaps the problem would never have been if the load was spread out. Sandra Pasteur also has a round-the-clock schedule and express test delivery service updated now and then. We have developed a new uh, application with which when you the, red, the result is ready, we immediately send an SMS to the traveler. Bracing up to meet demands that exceed lab processing capacities is necessary though, as a lot is at stake for travelers who must avoid inconveniences that come with delays in COVID test result withdrawal. In this week's Newsroom series, the exponential growth of violence in schools has been attributed to aspects such as gambling and other games of chance the youth engage in. In the West region, for example, school authorities who are aware of the phenomenon are taking stringent measures to stop the practice and to dissuade through stiff sanctions. Simtia Saptala reports on the Vice. In the West region, precisely this college in Banjun, another student lost his life about a year ago. What happened was that some students were gambling and a classmate came and collected the money in order to stop them from playing. Unhappy about the meddling, a group decided to attack the student back in the neighborhood. He was wounded on the head, rushed to the hospital where he died. A gambling situation that is also frequent at the GBHS Sultan Ibrahim Joya in Fumban, where students are often caught in the act. School authorities say they endeavor to provide continuous sensitization of the ills of drugs and gambling. Efforts that must be accompanied by concrete actions, like was the case in Banjun, a wall is being built by students in a workshop as part of practical exercise in order to keep out all intruders. The supply and distribution of electricity in the East region will be improved upon and rehabilitation carried out in a number of plans. The Director General of the Electricity Development Corporation, Theodore Sangu, made the assurance during a tour to the region. Elizabeth Mbombone Agbo tells us more. Work is in progress at the Lompanga food plants. The technicians are concreting the pen stock one and technical rooms that will drive water into the turbine to generate mechanical energy. Visiting the site for the second time in less than three months, the Director General of the Electricity Development Corporation is hopeful the 2022 deadline will be respected. Uh, roughly 45% for the power plant. For the moment, we are now on the very critical phase to concrete for the pen stock number one, two, three, and four. So you can say to the population of the East region that we are very confident now that we will reach this target. The respect of the deadline is equally evident in the construction of the high tension line, which as of now has witnessed no setback. The equipment of the transport line is already done. Uh, we, are, we are expecting that the pylon to be elect in the weeks to come. We expect uh, the transport line to be ready before December 2021. With the coming of the second wave of the coronavirus, the Electricity Development Corporation envisages to adopt new strategies to keep the work in progress. The Lompanga food plant, upon completion, will supply 30 megawatts of electricity to some 150 villages of the East region and beyond. 
In other news, mechanisms to step up competitiveness in the livestock and fishery sectors have been outlined in Yaoundé. This was during the first ordinary session of the steering committee of the Livestock and Fish Farming Chain Value Development Project. It was chaired by the Minister of the Sector, Dr. Tiger, who emphasized that the project, worth some 65 billion silver francs, will develop infrastructure. Here now is the coordinator of the project, Dr. Abubakar Njoya, speaking on its essence. We plan to build uh, three major industrial uh, meat uh, plants, one in Bamenda, one in Douala, and another one in Yaoundé. We, we also intend to build 26 uh, markets across the country to sell uh, meat in appropriate conditions. We are going to train farmers in, in the domain of uh, fingerling production to distribute across the country so that people can get into uh, fish production, even at the very sp small scale to the large scale. The life of the Cameroonian agriculture engineer, activist and politician Bernard Jongan has been celebrated. The illustrious agronomist who died last February 21 was paid homage today in Yaoundé. Emanuela Muni was there and our reports. Born in Bangwa in October 1955, Bernard Jonga earned a degree in agricultural engineering from the Faculty of Agronomy and Agricultural Sciences in Chang. He was known for advocating in favor of Cameroonians in rural areas over multinational farms and denouncing the embezzlement of funds in the corn industry. Appreciate, uh, we can emphasize on what he did for farmers' organizations. He worked a, lo a lot to strengthen and to recognize the, the, the place in the entire community. In the 80s, he founded the NGO Service d'Appui aux Initiatives Locales de Développement, which published the newspaper La Voix du Paysan. He died on the 21st of February 2021 in Amiens at the age of 65 and will be laid to rest in his native Bangwa in the West region on Saturday, March 20, 2021. Despite our efforts, COVID-19 plunged many families into mourning and seriously hampered the functioning of our economy and society. I want to our COVID-19 stop the decision of the Minister of Secondary Education to impose a regular screening of learners and instructors is being implemented in the North region. This will guarantee that persons who show no signs of carrying the virus are detected upon arrival on campus and placed on treatment. Baldwin Summer is with Dr. Willie Bilogi at the Garwa Regional Hospital. They tell us how it is being implemented in that part of the country. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening, Esther Kima. We are still in the north region of Cameroon, where with our guest, Dr. Willy Bilogi of uh, the uh, Garwa Regional Hospital, we discuss uh, strategies put in place uh, between the uh, north regional delegation of uh, secondary education and health professionals here in this part of the country to implement uh, one of the decisions by the Minister of Secondary Education as far as a screening, a massive screening of uh, students and uh, school officials uh, in this ongoing process to limit the spread of uh, COVID-19. Good evening to you, Dr. Willy Bilogi. Uh, where are we with uh, this uh, strategy between health professionals and the uh, secondary education uh, delegation here in the north region to implement this decision by the Minister of Secondary Education? Okay. Concerning this decision uh, by the Minister of uh, Secondary Education, we have first of all have, we have had a meeting with uh, regional delegation of secondary high schools to plan all the schools of the region and now we are in the second stage of the of this is by put and serve all the personal, not only not all the personal, and all the material necessary for the testing of all the students or all the teachers. Which means that all the different teachers and different students will have to adhere to a particular timetable put in place for them to be screened for COVID-19. Yes, 
Thank you so much, Dr. Willie Bilogi, for those explanations. It is uh, uh, a decision that has been respected already here with the North region of Cameroon, precisely in Garoua, uh, screening for COVID-19 at the level of for the secondary education uh, sector in the country. Back to you, Esther Kima. So much, Baldwin. That is a laudable initiative to check the spread of the deadly and ravaging coronavirus. On to other news. The public service offer and its digitalization programs have been elucidated to state employees and the public in the South region. This was during a working visit of the Minister of Public Service and Administrative Reform, Joseph Lay, who outlined that the project is expected to reduce delays in the treatment of fires and to foster performance. Clarence Aze tells us more. The modernization of administrative procedures is already in full swing at the Ministry of Public Service and Administrative Reform. During day two of his working visit to the South region, Minister Joseph Lee said the digitalization of administrative procedures has countless advantages. He added that his ministry is now making use of the different online communication platforms to reach out to users for quick service delivery. When you have people leaving their post of duty because they want to go to Yaoundé and follow sometimes just one paper, you see, he abandons his post, he wastes a lot of money and he even takes risks of accidents on the road. That's why, as the head of state wants us to do, it's an instruction, we must go with administration nearer the user. The groundbreaking digitalization process on the way at Minfopra enables users to consult their files online and gives possibility to candidates to submit their entire application for government competitive examinations. After a series of exposés on the simplification and digitalization of some administrative procedures and a question and answering session, the minister visited the South Regional Delegation of his ministry where a multimedia center has been put in place for candidates to henceforth take the oral examinations by video conferencing before heading to Kribi for a similar working session. In education, 26 primary schools of Tuba subdivision in the Northwest region have received didactic material from the Ministry of Basic Education as part of the 2020-2021 support for an effective school year. The mayor of the Tuba Council, Martin Tanjong, who handed over the items, decried the absence of the administrative and teaching staff who use the socio-political crisis to abandon their duty posts. Mercy Kusi has details from Bamenda. All of these stationaries, first aid kits and farm tools are destined for the 26 primary schools in the Tuba subdivision. The items are said to have come from the Ministry of Basic Education through the Tuba Council as part of their annual support to schools. In the course of their distribution, the mayor of Tuba Front, as some of the head teachers, reported to have abandoned their schools on the pretext of the sociopolitical crisis. Some of the schools are really having in the center of the town. When you go to these schools, you don't find the children, you don't find the head teachers. We are providing the necessary kits and the necessary material for them to carry on with their functions. So it is them to some the courage to get back to. Plus. In order to promote agriculture in Tuba Council area, it was precise that the farm tools among the donated items are to enable the school administrators include farming in their curricula and make sure that every pupil is actively involved. On the sports, beautiful victory for Cotton Sport of Garoua today at the Rumde Aja Stadium in Garoua. The Cotton Weavers beat their opponents, Renaissance Sportive of Bekan, Morocco, two goals to zero. The match counts for their second group game for the Confederation of African Football Cup. They are now second in the group with three points. Romeo Kenny has details of the match. 54 minutes into full action. Time for grace and jubilation for Cotton Sport of Garwa when Swaibu Umaru gets the curtain rosa for host team. La belle occasion pour le but! Supremacy is later imposed by the court night at the 72nd minute in a magistral strike by Arno Sibiri. Cotton 2, Renaissance the Bay can nothing. Before the supremacy, both teams manifested confident and beautiful football skills. 
On several incursions, Keeper Nazis Land denied tally reduction from visitors. This in panicky defensive moves. The 2 0 victory has catapulted Cotton Sport to the second place in Group B with three points, one point behind JS Kabili. Cotton Sport of Garwa will take on Napsa Stars of Zambia in Day 3 of CAF Confederations Cup on April 2, 2021. Now, on to the exodus of sports talents. There is an imperative for sports officials to ensure that sports talents in the country are properly managed. In the absence of adequate follow up, many are those who abandon love for country to pick up other nationalities for fame and gain. Gerard Nanji Ayambe reports that actions must be taken to avoid nationals giving up country in a hurry. The living conditions of most Cameroonian athletes leaves much to be desired. When you look at the living condition of uh, our athletes, there is a, a very big uh, gap with uh, their performance. Some of them, after their sportive performance, they are abandoned in their condition. There is a problem of recognition in this point of view. There are so many players playing for various clubs but I doubt if there is a mechanism that really follows up whether these players are being paid their dues, whether their contracts are respected. Ohilie Ndomo, one-time African short put champion, Olympic gold medalist, Francois Mbango, Kylian Mbappé playing his trade in the French national team, are just few among the many talents Cameroon has lost. Something therefore needs to be done and on time. It is important today to articulate patriotism and the possibility of uh, and address the issue to uh, manage those talent, how also to manage their living conditions. The lessons to learn are many and must be taken very seriously to save the country's sports fraternity from such sinking fortunes. 15 the glory of sportsmen in Cameroon for the most part dwindles when they are out of the pitch, paving way to misery. This brings to the limelight the critical need to make certain the reintegration of Cameroonian athletes after their professional career. Although a couple have made strides to create enterprises and to upgrade their skills, the issue of proper retirement still preoccupies. Romeo Kearney explains. In active service, plurality of Cameroonian sportsmen are falling short, anticipating promising retirement life by income earned. At 29, Canons keeper James Dwayang is an entrepreneur. He played for Cameroon's Indomitable Lions between 1991 and 1994 while in the books of Canon Yawunde, now a civil servant and football tactician. I was playing football, also going to school after my baccalaureate. I made, I made an exam to ENGS. I was playing this time. This is how my integration was very easy. He was at the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta, USA as an athlete. Today, a gratified retiree. During this period, I was a student in ENGS. Therese Ngobatang is former judo champion and presently a national coach. The Cameroon National Olympic and Sports Committee has since 2015 put up several training programs for career orientations. They are like being a coach or being a sports manager. Uh, maybe they want to be an accountant or carpenter even or welder. Anything that you believe they can do to any living after sports in the society. So we can accompany them for, um, you know, go along with them to make sure that they achieve their ambitions. At the Ministry of Sport and Physical Education, endeavors are made for spontaneous government aid to athletes of different disciplines. And work has begun in earnest for the contingent of Cameroonian military experts deployed by President Paul Bia to assist in operations in Ekotura, Guinea. Gratitude has been expressed to the state of Cameroon for the unflinching support. That was one of our main headlines on the 7th of the news tonight. Join Adam Bala in 30 minutes for the news in the French language. Good evening and thanks for watching the 7th of the news. Good night. I urge you once again to put on your face masks.
to wash your hands regularly and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus. Ici, toute l'info.